Hey, what's up you guys? It's Bjorn from Triassic Park Traps again and we are back with a new video. Um, we're just gonna take a small uh, bit of time to talk about the new setup because unfortunately last time when I set up the tank, the new tank, the old tank basically, but it is as new, uh, I did a new setup of course and the water is way much clear right now there is only a light deficiency in the middle because I'm using a different hatchery the reason for this is because I was actually using the XL hatchery the last like last time and the thing was um, the eggs didn't hatch properly and I was not completely sure why the eggs didn't hatch for the second time already so I was like come on man I want some trials really bad it has been like over a week now and I have still haven't seen any Nopoli so uh, what I did was uh, I ended another um, yeah hatchery because it just didn't hatch anything so I was like what should I do what should I do what was the problem uh, I waited enough I did definitely wait long enough uh, about four days on each occasion usually if it doesn't work I mean, within four days I just decide to use other uh, eggs or to take a different type of uh, water and try it over again I can do this because I got quite a lot of eggs of many species so I can I have like the comfort the comfort of uh, just trying again uh, but if you don't you can always wait for up to two weeks because uh, sometimes some eggs will just take a little bit longer for before they hatch but it's fine uh, the thing was, uh, I thought I was using rainwater, but uh, we had a wheelbarrow uh, standing outside which collected some rainwater, but there was some um, some ground in it. So I actually suspect that there was maybe something wrong with the water that was inside it, or it was quite old already, that's also possible. So what I did is, when it was raining outside, because we had some rain, uh, quite a lot of rain the last several weeks, so I decided to find a space where I could find some extra rainwater, like uh, that was like uh, collecting on a tarp, and um, I basically used that water because it was pretty clear and it was quite fresh. So this is fresh rainwater that I set up the hatchery with. Uh, unfortunately, this hatchery is completely black. It's black plastic. Uh, it's a large microwave uh, type of dish. Uh, it used to have like barbecue steaks or something in it, but it's fine. It's It really works fine like a hatchery. It's quite large as well. I think it's half of the size extra like uh, compared with the transparent uh, XL hatchery. So I should say that this is the XXL hatchery, but that's also what I really wanted to uh, highlight this time uh, I did use um, some eggs from a different generation that I was uh, breeding a while back it's uh, the triops cancriformis um, uh, but the gonochoric species it's basically a male female cancriform species so that's going to be really interesting um, some people label this species as uh, triops cancriformis uh, green from Spain and it is gonochoric they usually in the description people will tell it's a gonochoric species I've seen some other uh, breeders that have this same species but there is a thing because in the Spanish Iberia or Siberia of Iberia Iberian Iberian or something uh, there is like a location in Spain that uh, features a special type of traps which is called the traps Mauritanicus and that's a trout species that I was already like for a long time really interested in because these guys get like, extremely large they can reach up to 11 or 12 centimeters which should be about 3 inch or something and that's fairly large the thing is I used to have this species I already hatched them before but the thing was I was using a smaller tank so they didn't get like the large size that I was expecting they would get but the thing is I'm back with a larger tank this time so uh, for that reason I hope that this time uh, I will actually see way bigger male traps as well because in the previous setup I always had the problem that I had too many males not enough ladies the ladies get bothered all day eventually they die from stress and I only left with males that cannot produce any eggs so it was not like a fully working setup definitely not uh, the most practical way to grow some extra eggs from a species so this time I'm back with a bit bigger tank it's a 60 liters tank um, that's about three times the size of the other uh, nursing tank that I was used to call it because that was the tank where I would grow out juvenile um, anopoly in the hatchery up to juvenile uh, size when they were big enough to be transferred to the main tank but what now I'm actually using larger hatcheries 
keep them a little bit longer inside the hatchery until they are like really fully grown and like uh, large enough to be transferred to a different type of water. Uh, this water is basically 50% uh, tap water that's about that's around coming from the tap in about let's say 150 TDS. So it's not too hard of what type of water because there is actually some kind of device uh, installed in this home that is actually removing uh, the hardness from water as well. So uh, 150 TDS straight from the tap and I actually use 50% uh, RO DI water as well to even uh, dilute it down to about let's say 70 to 80 TDS and that's basically what I've been working on uh, the last several times uh, the thing is I'm just uh, naming numbers right now but the thing is please don't use these numbers that I just named as uh, measuring as a measuring guide because I'm still testing these parameters so it's really um, useful to like uh, wait till I release a video where I will state what the golden standards will be for the future because I'm still researching this subject a lot of people have like um, some kind of parameters that work really well for them but I definitely know that there are so many different trout species out there that there are definitely going to be differences with parameters as well this one is kind of like an interesting species as well because usually i would tell people if you go for cancriformis you need to keep it down at the cooler temperature as well but the fun part is this drops is actually coming from spain which has a rather more uh, tropical climate than like germany or um, the country where i come from like the netherlands uh, we used to have drops cancriformis in the wild as well but the last populations perished i guess <clears throat> In Germany, they are still in nature as well. Uh, the thing is, the canker form is that are is like on the top part of Europe. It has a rather like um, a more mild climate. Let's say 22 up to 24 degrees Celsius. But with these bad guys, they come from Spain, so they can actually handle a way uh, higher type of temperature. And I'm actually at. Uh, let's see what temperature are we at currently. I think it's a solid 26 or 27 degrees Celsius. So that's kind of, I would say, tropical. Yeah, it's definitely warm. That's great. And right now we are going to take a look at the hatchery because I actually spotted some hatchlings. Uh, the thing is, about three hours ago, uh, I didn't see any hatchlings. But the thing is, they are starting to hatch right now. So I actually think that this is the live moment where they are actually hatching. Uh, the thing is... Uh, I just want to take a closer look at the surface because we can't look from the sides anymore. I'll show you. Completely blacked out. So that doesn't work anymore. So we need to see, uh, take a look from the top. But I just spot... Oh, there is one. Definitely. You can also see some eggs floating still. But over there is a tiny little triops. I think this one is at the... Mm, definitely at the first nobler stage so this is like a fresh hatchling it hasn't formed the tail yet so it basically it looks like a little sleeping bag with two arms <laughs> and the thing is um, in stage three or four I guess they actually get the tail um, let's see if we can see another one around or maybe a little group perhaps is there any grouping around? No, no groupings. I just saw one hatchling, but there are more definitely for sure. Because before I started um, recording, I actually saw about six of them. So the good news is there should be more. The bad news is I can see them currently. Hmm. Oh, there is another one. Really fast one as well. Let's see where I, oh there he is. I can definitely tell that it's way harder to film this from the top instead of the sides. But, um, well, you get the point guys. Uh, we got some fresh hatchlings going. In. Oh, there they are. There's another one. Yes. Great. Good speed, good speed. Definitely, definitely. Looks like they are pretty healthy, so that's great. Um, also, what's interesting, usually canker formers takes a little bit of time before they start to grow up and start to get a little bit larger due to the low temperature they're in. 
thing is, this one is at 27 degrees. So I'm kind of hoping that these guys are going to be cycling through the first several stages quite fast. Maybe when I uh, take a look at tomorrow morning, they will end it up at the fourth stage of the ju of the juveniles uh, of the fourth stage of the meta noblier stages excuse me so that's the end stage and then that's it they're going to be juveniles and eventually they will be adults in about two weeks so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed the small little update and i hope to see you guys next time